This is Drom Shakasuto. The desire of the person creates a vessel that's an inner power that is similar to gravitation, to the power of gravity, that the desire and the inner passion of a person is, um, is pulling the holy energy um, from heaven to his soul. Now, every person in this world is able to bring down huge amounts of spiritual bounty, but the will and the holy desire of a person must be very focused and aimed to the right purpose and by aiming the right intention while willing and wanting to achieve spiritual achievements you can pull the right light in the right measure in the right quality that will suit you that will be helpful for you that will allow you to rise and to grow and to achieve higher levels than that one that you are at right now. In our journey, we are searching for truth. And therefore, we are asking for those deep concepts that are known in the Jewish world as the world of Kabbalah, the ancient knowledge of Kabbalah. Because Kabbalah is a spiritual gift that we received, been blessed with by heaven. Creator himself gave all that wisdom to Moses and Moses passed it to the next generations through his loyal student, Yoshua. There are many things that I would like to discuss and many topics that I wish that we'll have the opportunity to talk about and to bring down light on those topics. But the most important one is how we will become vessels to enjoy true light, pure light, and not to fall into the traps of the evil inclination. There are many people, unfortunately, in this world that their intentions are not pure, and by that failing and failing others as well, in very bent methods of learning Torah and especially secrets of Kabbalah. And this is a very horrible and sensitive topic that the only way to protect ourselves and the wide world from that kind of failures is by creating that holy place inside of ourselves and to build that pure vessel inside of our mind that the light that is coming toward us will be pure and will be stable and right and will heal us and will not poison and damage us spiritually. The key for that is humility. And how come humility is the right tool for that? Because humility is equal in many ways to the word truth, emet. And this is why Moses, that he was the man of truth, 
was also the most humble person in the world because humility, let's say a humble person in a situation that he made a fortune will not gonna be proud of himself and gonna go and praise himself to others. He will keep quiet and he will praise the Creator for that success. Why? You're gonna say because he's humble. But the humility that we're recognizing in that person is actually his connection to the truth. From his point of view, he is recognizing the reality that the success that took place in his life was a free gift from the Creator. He's not falling into that trap of his arrogant, into that impure spirit that tilt that removes the person from the path of truth into a world of illusions and lies that over there he thinks to himself that he is so successful that he made that fortune that it deserved it he was worth it for that gift so humility is equal to truth in many ways and when we are working on our midot on our attributes we become humble and by that we're creating that vessel to receive the wisdom that comes from the world of truth the true wisdom the wisdom of Kabbalah every person in our lifetime experience his life through a certain time tunnel that's your life you came to this world for 120 years, you're gonna experience life in this world for 120 years. You're a time traveler. You are traveling in time. But time is a creation. Time is not our reality. It's not the truth. It's something that the Creator created for us to experience life in this world through time is an illusion really the creator lives eternal life and he is experiencing and creating an eternal world in every moment and moment like snapshots of a, of a camera that takes a picture and that picture exists forever every moment is eternal and we can learn it from every particle of the creation. If you're going to use a microscope, you're going to realize that there is no physicality in this world. You can go deeper and deeper and deeper, deeper than the atoms even, to an empty space of infinity. And if you're going to search with a telescope to the stars, to the sky, you're going to see the same thing. If you're going to look into the eyeball of a person, if you're going to look at your cells on every organism, on every particle of creation, you're going to see infinity installed inside of it. There is no physicality. There is no beginning and there is no end. All the world is endless because the Creator made it like that because the Creator brought out His own spirit and from His inside that He is infinite, from his inside, from his godly spirit, he created the worlds. But when we are coming down to this world, we're experiencing only one world, our world. You came down to this world and you started experiencing the world through your time tunnel. And you can experience certain things. You're born in a certain area, neighborhood, family, friends, kindergarten, school, yeshiva, whatever. And you got married and you see people and you shake hands and you hug your friends. And you move on with your life and you experience the world through your eyes, through your ears, your nose, your mouth, your senses. Are those ones to feel and to search and to understand and to grab the world. And that's the mission that the Creator sent you for amazing you're doing your job but the real person that is seeking the truth a real truth seeker he's seeking for a meaning in life and not only to play a role in life and to enjoy the colors and the tastes and the flavors the smells and the sights he's looking for meaning he's asking himself those questions what am i doing here 
Is that the end? My life is to eat and to drink and even to be happy, to be nice to people. That's the purpose of my life. For that I'm here to be nice, to shake hands, to hug my friends, to build houses, to have family. That's the purpose. That's the goal. Is that the end of my mission or there is more to it? Because like we said, you can enjoy the apple and just eat it as an apple, but the, the science, the people will take it and will investigate and will understand that inside that apple there are cures to many diseases and it can heal many people. And they will bring out much more from, out from that apple than you can imagine. Because you're not aware to that desire that the Creator puts in your mind, in your heart, that you walk in the street and there are certain dangers that are hovering above your head and you're not aware to them at all and you just walk and suddenly you see a, a, a grocery store, a, a, a vegetable, fruits and vegetable store and you suddenly have that crazy desire for apple and you stop everything <coughs> and you, you, you even put your phone in your pocket for a couple of minutes and you go and you take that juicy apple and you just take a bite of that, from that apple and you don't know that the Creator put that thought in your mind, that desire, because those things that are hidden, those particles that are hidden inside that apple, the spiritual ones, the sparks that gives it life, and also the fibers, the vitamins, the, the, the sugar, whatever, is needed for your life purpose. They are protecting you. They can heal you right now from certain dangers, from certain illnesses, weaknesses, things that you don't know that are even attacking you. But that inner desire that the Creator just planted in your heart are bringing you to heal yourself. So every particle of the creation is much deeper than we can imagine. And the question is just how much you look deeper and deeper into it. Now the real truth seekers are looking inside. They realize that the outside world is fantastic. It's reflecting for them the message and knowledge of the Creator to guide them to seek for Him. And then from that amazing lesson of the external world that is surrounding them, they learn an inner lesson to go and search inside. Because those truth seekers, very fast in their process of learning and coming closer to the Creator, they start being aware to an inner voice of their soul that is talking to them from within. And very fast they're catching that the messages that are coming from outside are waking them up to an inner understanding and to a spiritual inner development and not an external outside one. So those people start to investigate inside and then they're finding something very, very deep. And the Torah is calling it the white fire of the Torah, the holy fire of the Torah that's been compared to the white page scroll that the Torah has been written on. The Torah is written with dark fire, those are the shaped letters. And it's written on a white fire that's been compared to the blank page that the Torah has been written on. Now that is also Torah. It's a white Torah. It's a bright Torah. It's a clear Torah. It's a higher Torah than the written one. That's the Torah by heart. That's the deeper understandings of your mind when you are bringing out buckets of water from an inner spring of Torah. Now when a person starts bringing out water from that inner well, he finds out that he himself is endless as well. That inside of him he can find the Creator. Inside of him there is a tunnel, there is a channel, and he can go deeper and deeper into that place, into that place that he will be nullified completely, become one with the Creator. And then he becomes like Moses that being called the man of God, Isha Elohim. That he's not a regular man, it's not just an Ish, it's an Isha Elohim. It's a godly man because all of his movements and all of his thoughts and all of his words are working in one pace, in complete sync with the creation, 
with the clo with 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 the creator himself and he is not bent to his will he is reflecting the creator's will completely with no arguments he's not refusing he's not arguing with that light he feels satisfaction from keeping god's will and becoming one with him now when a person is doing that he gets into the depths of his soul in that moment he comes out from that <coughs> narrow time tunnel that he was trapped in and he goes into a deeper point of view and he can look on a different dimension and as deep as you go into your soul as deep you can reach higher you can reach in the worlds means that when you go deeper into the roots of your soul you start realizing that you are not an individual fruit you're a part of a group of fruits a family of fruits that are growing on one branch but if you will go deeper you're going to start understanding that that branch is only part of series of branches that are similar to you and if you go deeper you understand that they are only branches that are coming out from a more main and 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 thicker branch that is holding a third of that tree half of that tree and then you go to the trunk and you realize you can start recognizing and seeing things through other time tunnels like we described hours and you can experience the worlds and the creator promised to every righteous person that he will inherit 310 worlds he will have the ability to experience and to feel and to see the world from 310 pair of eyes he will have the ability to sense and to experience the world from 310 angles different angles different people different animals even mm -hmm. might be spirits and trees and fruits different angles in ways that a person's mind cannot understand on that the verse is saying in Yeheskel ein lo ra'ata elokim zulatecha your eye can suddenly reach things that no other eye in the world can grab no one else can understand what that you can understand but it depends in your dedication to the truth in how much you seek for answers from within how much you're connecting yourself to the inner flaming holy fire bright fire of the torah of the wisdom of the creator now a person can think to himself oh wow that's an amazing theory it will be a theory if you will not going to have an inner work on that thing it's a theory it's written and it became to be the dark letters of torah again you downgraded that wisdom from being your source of life to become a theory and then you can teach it you can talk about it you can tell it to others but it will always going to catch a shape of this world in a way it will be quotes it will be explanations it's going to be sentences it's going to be verses it's going to be recorded it will be sound it will be heard but it will not be inner an inner connection to the creator is a 100% effort of the person in the present time now when you want to connect yourself to the inner flame of inner fire of the white fire it cannot happen tomorrow or that it happened to you back then in the past it can happen only in the present why because the creator himself his name is yud k vav k that means for our ears the main explanation for us is that he is the present time he was he will be and he is the present time when you lived your life in the past let's say one hour ago 50 years ago you experienced life back then in the present time 
You didn't experience it in the past. You remember it now as part of your past. But really, when you were there, you experienced those moments in the present. You were there. Over there, when you were there, you experienced the Creator's supervision on you in the present time. Because that's who the Creator is. He is Havaya Baruchu. He is the blessed present time. He is with you right now. He is your soul from within, and He is the worlds that are surrounding you, and He made you to be the vessel to experience it, to collaborate, to join the outside world with the inner world, to be that glue between the dark fire to the bright fire, the dark letters of the Torah that are being written right now on that white fire of your soul. That's your intention. That's your holy desire. They are designing the Torah that is being written by you right now in the present time. Now, that issue of the world is something that a person must put his eyes on, his mind on. It's so important. To understand that we are now in our lifetime are limited to live our lives in this constriction that we are at in physical body is only as a result of our lack of understanding of who we really are. We are holding ourselves as people. You're holding yourself as a certain person with a certain name, with a certain look in a certain height coming from a certain background, you relate your true self to your physical body when your physical body is only the pen that will write the book. But the mind of the author will decide which letters will be written and not the pen itself. And you should become like a pen in the hand of the author. means that you need to let your soul ride your body and not your body force your soul to different places. You need to recognize yourself as your soul. And when you reach to that understanding and you hold that soul, it can take you deep. You can flow on that wave to dimensions that no eye ever saw and experienced before. The Creator will show you Olamcha tir'eh b'chayecha. You're going to see your world in your lifetime. The Creator can take you out of your body and to open your spiritual eyes, the eyes of your mind, to experience the worlds from different angles, from the view eyes of a bird that flies above the view, the, the nature. You can fly for hours and to see the worlds. You can travel in time to different time zones because your soul is eternal. It's true that now you're here in this lifetime, a journey of those 120 years, hopefully, but it's only this lifetime Really, you came in different lifetimes to this world. I compared it to the swim of a dolphin that takes his body out of the water and then back in. And that's how you flow in and out from this world. One person was here only five times. A silly person like me, for sure, been here at least 200 times. Like, and I can't get over with it. Like, I love it. I must come again. I love it. It's so great. Like, look at the people that you meet in life. So, like, it's great. No, Jeff, are you coming with me? We're coming again, right? No. <laughs> the swim of that dolphin to bring you in and out from this world to the world to come and then back into this world for another mission in a different form with different sparks, different spiritual particles of your spirit makes that journey so interesting because if you go into the depths of your soul you can find yourself in that elevator in that life in that time tunnel if you're going to go deeper than to view and look and search this lifetime you can go and visit the world to come and you can also come back and visit in a different lifetime and you can find out who you are in the root of your soul. You can find your root 
in the ancestors, in our forefathers, you can know if you came from that tribe or from the other tribe, from that family, are you a Kohen or a Levi or an Israel, are you from that tribe, you lived in Jerusalem in the time of the temple, in the first one, in the third, in the, in the third one. <laughs> Who knows where you are and where you came from. All those truths are available for us. You can reach them. It's inside of you. You don't need to go to a Mekubal for him to open your eyes. It's another way. If that Mekubal is a man of truth, a person of truth, that been blessed from heaven with the ability to access other people to their different lifetimes or different time zones, whatever, bless him. There were real righteous people like those, like the Rashash HaKadosh, like Rav Mordechai Sharabi, like the Baba Sali HaKadosh, and more, and the Chose Milublin, the Baal Shem Tov, and more and more and more, and like many of those real truthful, righteous people, and not only men, also women. If it's Esther Malka, if it's all the, the, the mothers, the holy mothers, and more, and Yehudit, and Ya'el Eshet Chavera Keni, and Vora the Prophet, and Chulda the Prophet, and more, and men and women been blessed in that blessing, and also not only Jewish, also not only from the tribe of Israel, like that Elijah the prophet makes that testimony, brings heaven and earth to agree to his speech, that it does not matter if you're a man or a woman, if you're a slave of a free person, if you're a Jewish or a Gentile, the Holy Spirit, Divine Spirit will hover above upon you, corresponding to the greatness of your actions, to the effort that you put in your life journey. You can be a lawyer, you can be a judge, you can be a doctor, you can be a learner, you can be a scholar, you can be an electricity man. The Divine Spirit of Heaven will hover upon you based on your dedication for the truth. It means your inner thirst for the truth. Which truth? The real truth. Now, which truth is it? All right, there are so many ways, so many lanes, so many paths, so many options, so many methods, so many theories, so many rabbis, so many communities, so many people that are talking in so many languages. How I'm going to know? Everyone are claiming for truth. Everyone are claiming for truth. Even the sickest ones of them all, they for sure the only ones that hold the truth. How will you know? Like we said, if you... A simple person wants just to enjoy the external world around you, you can choose. All the options are open for you. But if you're a truth seeker, you will look for the truth from within. You're going to find your truth. You're going to find the voice of truthfulness, the loyalty of your heart. You're going to find the true voice of your soul. You're going to dedicate your life to become your true self, to stop lying to yourself. To stop being fooled by the outside world that opens a sea of opportunities. Apples, mandarins, bananas, pineapples, like grapes in so many colors, all the options. You can live in this neighborhood, become part of that community in that state or another in the Holy Land of Israel. And you can pick cities over there and synagogues. You can be a Sfaradi, an Ashkenazi. You can be a Hasid, a Mekubal, a Breslever, or Chabadnik. You can do whatever you want. You can meditate. You can go to the Far East and to make Vipassana for 10 days, not to eat, not to drink, not to breathe. And you're not going to die. Whatever you want, you can pick from the outside world. But when you see that you have so many options, it needs to turn on a light bulb, a light in your mind, a warning sign. Because there is only one truth. This is a bottle. Only one truth you can say on that bottle. It's a bottle. But lies, we can say with no end on it. It's a door. It's a handle. It's a car key. It's my house. I live in it. Really. My family and I, we all live in that bottle. I can make up theories and stories about that poor bottle for years and I won't stop. Lies, there are many. Truth, there is only one. So when you see that truths are offered to you from outside, reject them. Don't listen. Ask yourself, 
what my senses are telling me. In my mind, in the back of my head, my heart is calling me. What do I feel? What do I sense? What my soul is telling me? And that will be the truth that will rise you to the heights, to the highest places of them all, to observe and to see the pleasant of heaven, the pleasant of Hashem, like King David asked. He wanted to see the pleasant of Hashem. What's the pleasant of Hashem? I'm going to give you a small taste of the pleasant of Hashem. Think to yourself on a wonderful moment that you had. You saw an amazing sight. You saw the sunrise, the sunset. You were standing on the beach. You hold the hand of your beloved ones. You, it was an amazing seder. You sat with all your family when your parents were still alive. Something amazing, something beautiful that you can relate to, that you remember in your life. Something from your childhood. A moment, a birthday, your bar mitzvah, the wedding of your brother. Some moment of your life that for you was the peak, all right? The Creator, for the Creator, from the Creator's point of view, that moment was an eternal moment. That moment was not taking place under the limitation of your time tunnel. It was an eternal, above time moment. And the Creator is experiencing that moment with you and your joy and the joy of your siblings and the joy of everyone that were there eternally. And not only that happy moment of yours, all the happy moments of all the people and all the animals in the same time eternally, above time. That's the pleasant of Hashem. The Creator is looking in this world not only from our limited time angle that we see the world right now. And even if I'm going to try to see wider than my eyes can see, and I will try to imagine that above this house there is another house and there is life in it. And except of that, to those two houses, there are more houses and more life and more buildings and more areas and more cities and more towns and more states, and more views, and more forests, and more sea, and more animals, and more deers, and porcupines, and birds, and geese, and lakes, and fish in the sea. And you can go and swim into those amazing dimensions that are taking place right now. But remember that the Creator is looking on all that fantastic creation, not under the limitation of time, just above time means that he's experiencing all the glory of all the moments in all the time zones since the early beginning of creation and before eternally. And the Creator was and is and will be in time of redemption and 1,000 years of redemption, of spiritual growth and, and, and development until our bodies will disappear into spirit and will become complete one and united with heaven with our spiritual bodies with no limitations, after 1,000 years of healing and, 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 and glory and pleasant, all those aspects are the happiness of Hashem. That is the pleasant of Hashem. Now, King David, how can you ask for that? This is something that the Creator can see, but not only the Creator. Why? Because inside your body there is a portion of heaven. You are a chelek eloka mimaal. You're a portion of heaven. A godly soul is treasured inside of you. And when you touch it, in that moment, you became endless. In that moment, you start travel into the depths of the spiritual world and you can experience the worlds in plural. You can see worlds of beyond. You can see every single thing. And like that the Creator said to Abraham, Am I holding something back from my slave Abraham? I'm not hiding anything. When Abraham looked at the stars and he saw that him and his wife Sarah will not have children, 
Hashem told him, you need to go out of your mindset that you think that you know how to read the map of the stars. I'll take you above the stars to higher dimensions. And he took Abraham, not because that Abraham was so unique. Abraham been chosen for us to show us the real true potential of every individual in our world. Because from an apple tree, only apples will grow. And if you came from that holy trunk of Abram and his children and his wife and that holy family, and you're part of that, and why, with the blessing of Abram been blessed, all the families around the world, and if you're enjoying that blessing to become one with that amazing family of Israel, even in your faith, even in your belief, because you believe that Hashem Elokei Israel, He is the King, the one that chose Am Israel to give them the Torah, the one that took them out of Egypt, the one that created the world, the one that is spending time with every individual creation. He is with everyone. He is the life spirit. When you understand that, you can become one with Him. And then, He gives His eyes to the righteous ones. And He can give His eyes to you. Because when Moses went with His people in dry land, in the middle of the sea, of the Red Sea, Every man and woman, slaves that just been saved from being redeemed from slavery in Egypt, saw spiritual sights that have not been revealed even to, Yeh to, to, Yehezkel ben to Yehezkel ben Buzi, to the greatest prophet. And they saw sights when they crossed the sea that no one can describe. And the third redemption, the last one that is taking place right now while we're talking, will be so great that the wonders that took place in the days of our ancestors that went out from Egypt will be almost forgotten compared to the wonders that we will see. The sea over there being opened for a huge public of between two to three million people that were all very holy, very humble, very pure, chosen righteous people that are about to receive the Torah in a very early generation. And for them, the sea being opened in a wonder. But when the third redemption will take place, if you will feel like going into the ocean here, you will be able to do that. And the ocean will open for you. And you will find treasures that will be greater than the treasures that our ancestor found. And all the creation and all the nature will show that he is completely surrendered and following God's will. And if the Creator will want to put you to fly on the wings of eagles that will take place physically, you will see those wonders. Whatever you will want, you will wish, you will dream of, will take place in your life. The wonders that are about to come, that are coming in our life, will be much greater than those ones that took place in the days of our ancestors. And from that you can learn that it's the true potential of every individual to nullify himself completely and to become one with the Creator. And that's Kabbalah. That is Kabbalah. Kabbalah cannot be the methods that are written in books. The amazing books that have been written by the righteous ones should inspire you to throw yourself into the depths of your soul and to find your true self. This is why the written things that have been written by the Ari Kadosh or the Cubs, the, the Gure Ari, or his main student, Rabbi Chaim Vital, or all the different righteous ones in later generations, or the real pillar of fire, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his holy group, all those people were people that threw themselves into the depths of their own souls. The Ari Kadosh sat for years on the back of the Nile, alone in a cabin, with his books, with his prayers, with his God, alone. 
Abram is a person that walked alone to find the Creator. Him and his wife, they went into the unknown. <coughs> Moses spent 60 years of his life in the desert of Sinai. 10 years of those 60 he spent in a pit, in prison, underground. Yosef, the righteous one, he spent 12 years of his life in prison. Those people were meditating. Daniel, the prophet, he found wonders. He saw things and visions that were greater than the visions that had been revealed to Yosef, the son of Jacob, that his face is carved on the throne of honor, only because that for three days he was meditating. He sat down on the ground and cried to the Creator and he fasted. He didn't eat and didn't drink and only prayed and begged to heaven to give him the answer. What? And his hand wrote on the wall and he knew what was written and he knew the right interpretation and he found out secrets by the power of the inner connection to your soul. And you cannot blame the external, the outside world for distracting your thoughts. It is a challenge. We have and we are facing many difficulties, a lot of distractions, voices, sounds, people, smells, opinions, <laughs> obligations, needs, desires, fears, anxiety. Many things are attacking us on a daily basis. But don't think, don't imagine to yourself that one of the righteous ones was free from those challenges. They went through all of that and more. And how you can tell that they really went through so much? That when you are getting serious with your inner search, the problems are not disappearing. <laughs> They're not. The level is rising corresponding to your spiritual power that is getting stronger as well. And you are suddenly able to deal with issues that there was no chance in the world that you will be able to survive a few years ago. And you're able to deal and to confront deeper fears and to stand against horrible situations and to represent the truth in an honorable way and in a much more polite way and you're able to represent and to reflect the godly soul that is treasured inside of you in darker places than you were before and it doesn't make that journey hard it makes that journey satisfying you start harvesting while you're seeding like Yitzchak that he seed let's say one seed and in the next day he woke up, opened his eyes, and he see 100 stalks of wheat. How did it happen? The Creator blessed him. Jacob is working for Lavan. He brings 10 goats, 10 sheep <coughs> to the pen. In the morning he brings out hundreds. What's going on? One night, hundreds of goats, hundreds of animals, and all those animals are spiritual, bent to him. 100% committed to him, loyal to him, doing their job. Abraham is walking and his herd is growing and expanding in front of his eyes. The well is walking with them while they're walking on the holy land, crossing one state to the next and the well is walking with them. And he's digging and revealing seven wells and watering the herds. And Jacob is making wonders and Moses is making wonders and then Yeshua, Binun, making wonders and Elijah and Elisha the prophet and Mon and on and on all those holy ones are coming to wake you up to wake me up to understand my true potential those are not legends from the past those are not our legends that we're leaning on that is a solid truth of our history this is the life the journey of our people that experience those wonders when the Creator chose them to reveal His power on His people to the wide world. 
And then when he wants to do that, there is no creation that can refuse, that can reject him, that can not surrender completely to him and to show his kingship to all. And he is choosing us today in the present time. That's the real Kabbalah. That you live in the present time. That you live your life with the Creator. That you understand the combinations and the normal value of things in depths. That you look and you seek for messages from the Creator in a healthy way. That you desire to keep His will. And you realize and you understand that it's much deeper than you imagine and that it's closer than you dreamed. It's not in the bookcase. It's not in the mouths of people. It's in your mouth and in your heart. You can find it. The Creator is close to everyone, to everyone who will call Him with truth. You need to find your connection to truth. Divrei emet nikarim. Words of truth can be recognized by you. You can recognize inside of yourself when you're being truthful and when you're allowing your fears to control your life. When you choose to lie or to avoid commitment and to find excuses or that you choose to be strong and to represent the inner truth of your feeling of your understanding and you're being honest enough and able to admit in your mistakes and to do tshuva and to atone and to erase all your sins that in a miraculous way all your sins can become merits. It can be that you will be rewarded on crimes, on sins when, when you go out of the fake imaginary world of illusion and you break the code of this physical world and you find in depth that the Creator is with you in every situation. And then you realize that the Creator, He's the one who leads you. He's the one that takes you in your journey to the ups and to the downs. That He took you down to Egypt and brought you back to the Holy Land. That He is with you he is your life. He is the length of your days and of your years. He is your happiness. He is the spirit that lives inside of you. And when you connect yourself to that completely, you will not die. You become like Elijah the prophet, like Hanoch. You can rise to heaven. Like ten righteous people that had them married from heaven, like your Rabbi Yoshua ben, Yoshua ben Levi and more. Batya Bat Paro, Batya, the daughter of Pharaoh, that she pulled Moses out of the water, out of the Nile. And she lived until today, eternal life. She never died. She never been buried. She climbed to heaven in a holy way, on a holy staircase. Those things for us are light bulbs, are signs from heaven to open our eyes to our true potential, to what we can achieve in this lifetime, that we can be redeemed and not to experience death. And not only that we're not going to die, also we're going to see the resurrection of the dead. And by the merit of our holy work, our forefathers, our ancestors will rise from the ground. All the ones that are asleep right now will open their eyes and will join us. And hundreds of millions of people will walk together to the Holy Land of Israel to see the pleasant of the Creator and to visit His house. To see the house of prayer that will be called the house of prayer to all nations, to all people. And everyone will come surrender to Him, will call Him in His name with a happy heart, with a wishing soul with an inner desire for unity, for understanding. Only the qualities will shine from within every personality. Every person will bring his good into that journey. 
millions and hundreds of millions will wake up the ten lost tribes the children of moses and all those ones that been left behind in different generations they will all wake up i heard once a crazy a crazy idea someone said i like i i don't even want to repeat it someone said that not six million Jews been killed in the Holocaust. Less than half, that's what he said. Because more than half were not Jewish halachically. So he was mourning only on, on half of those six millions. I want to ask you a question. If the evil inclination, the angel of death, found those people to be killed he found them belong to the Jewish nation and he want their death you think that the angel of death is just killing with no reason well that he found something precious in those holy souls and therefore he decided to destroy them completely they were not Jewish they were not Jewish halachically half of them let's say were not Jewish I couldn't care less for me, it's not important. 50 million Russians have been died and killed in the Holocaust. I'm not thinking about that at all. If the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, decided to take their lives and to burn them and to destroy them, he did it because of their holiness. Today, people are so self-centered and selfish to think, oh yeah, I'm Jewish, yeah, me, I'm part of the redemption, I'm part of the salvation, I'm part of the holy nation. I'll tell you something. In a moment, the holy lost tribes are about to wake up and to find their true identity. You know how humble you will become when you're going to see the children of Asher, the tribe of Zvulun, the tribe of Dan, of God, of Naphtali, when you're going to see those giant heroes coming back to claim their holy land that been given to their father and their foremothers, do you know what will happen to us tiny Jewish people? Do you know how humble we will be? How humble and poor we will hold ourselves seeing those pillars of light hundreds of millions of people a whole nation of the children of moses left behind in the desert of sinai never entered the holy land of israel those holy souls are lost now in darkness you cannot recognize their holiness you cannot see in them that they belong to the holy tribes. But when the spirit of Mashiach will come, he will blow away all the darkness. All the illusion will disappear and only the holiness will rise from the depths. And those ones that today are not considered holy suddenly will rise like holy candles in the dark. And you will see the glory and the beauty of every individual and millions and hundreds of millions of people going to be united in one mission with one holy desire to call Hashem the Creator in His name and to experience the worlds in depth. Emotionally, that experience will be so deep we cannot imagine. We can only dream and hope and desire for that moment to take place and it is about to come our mission as observant people observant jews observant whatever people that are desiring the truth is not about being called religious religious about running our life in a certain custom following a certain tradition that is the path that we should keep the rules of the Torah, that we should follow the wisdom of the real righteous ones, the real leaders of our nation, the ones that are really representing good and the light and wisdom of heaven. 
But to achieve completion, to bring the redemption, to experience that wonderful moment of complete salvation to the whole wide world, that there will be no more death in the world, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sicknesses. That the animals will live in peace, different species, different kinds, all will be friends with each other. That there will be no more death, that all the dead will rise, and that we're not going to die. That we're going to live eternal life with Mashiach. We'll walk with him toward Jerusalem. We'll see the glory of the temple of the Creator. We're going to see the Creator himself face to face. He will speak to us. To that moment, we are serving and we're sacrificing and we're dedicating our lives to. Not to be called religious or to act based on a certain method that we heard from someone that it's the right way. That's the path. That's your journey. That's part of the way that you do things. And it's wonderful and it's blessed. And it's amazing, fantastic and fascinating. But it's not the purpose. The purpose is not to be stuck in this world. The purpose is to uplift the darkness into the light, into eternity, into a place that is above time. And then in that place, we will experience the world's every righteous one, every chosen one that's been blessed to be in that time will see the world from 310 different angles, will experience the beauty of creation from 310 different aspects. That's the purpose. <coughs> that's a worthy cause to serve for, for the Creator's name to be revealed, known, famous and great in the world, that everyone will know him, that there will be no one left behind. Not one even will be left behind. It's reality. It's not a prophecy. It's the truth. That's how the redemption will take place, that there will be no one left behind. One single one will not be forgotten. And that's the cause. That's the purpose. That's Kabbalah that you connect yourself to the depths, to the wisdom, to the sense, to the inner will of the Creator, to the purpose of creation in every moment of your life, in the present, in the now, not when you dream on your past or hope for a better future, when you live your life in a mission under the kingship of heaven, with yoke of heaven on your back, leading people, showing the path, being a role model, revealing the treasures that have been given to you to reveal to the world, revealing the gifts and blessings that you've been blessed with, your talents, your conclusions, your senses, your deep understandings, your wisdom, your sensitivity, all your qualities, who you really are. That's what you need to share with the world. And it's godly. It's holy, it's heavenly, it's who your soul is, a beam of light, the Creator's light that drives in a vehicle, that drives in a certain shape in your body. It's a temporary body <coughs> in an eternal world, in an eternal life mission to reveal the godliness that is treasured within. Thank you very much. Shem will bless you. Thank you. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.